What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. Today the stock market had a very bearish engulfing rejection from resistance and the indices are now sitting at a very critical support zone. Is a stock market correction right around the corner? First up, let's take a look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. It feels so good to be back. And boy, oh boy, was this a fun trading day. So because I've been on vacation, there is a little bit of housekeeping that we need to catch up on. And the first thing we need to talk about now that the quarter is officially over is how did we do in the first quarter of 2024? So if I take my performance for the year to date, we are currently up 33.25% and currently closing at all time highs. So it is safe to say we are absolutely crushing this market because the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 are only up about six to eight percent each. So this is significant outperformance and this is why I told you we were going to crush the market this year and our benchmark was simply whether or not we were going to be a 5% interest money market and without a doubt we are absolutely crushing the money markets by staying in the equities market and making good risk reward setups and solid trades year round. Now you can see on this chart, there is no dip today, even though the market was down significantly. And that is because I saw the dip coming a mile away and I posted it in the Discord server before it even happened. And I'll show you that chart right now, which was just a simple double or triple top rejection from resistance. And very early in the morning in the Discord server, I told you we were opening at resistance and you should not be ruling out the bears while we are at resistance in what could be an hourly downtrend. And the rest is history and the market just started to bleed off from that resistance level and slice through all of the support beneath it. So by simply following price action and understanding that bears had a very good risk reward setup, that meant as a bull, it was time to sell or as a bear, it was time to take a low risk short trade. Or if you're very confident in your ability to do both, you could have sold your longs and then went short. So we are continuing to crush this market. And if you want access to all of my intraday updates and technical analysis, as well as my trade ideas, then you need to join the Sox Channel Discord server. And you can find out how to join the Sox Channel Discord by clicking on the link in the description of this video. And then you can come crush the market with us. All right, so let's jump into the analysis on SPY. And like I told you, this is a very clear double or triple top rejection. So we need to be aware of that. And we are down below this neckline, which was right around 518. And we did break two support levels at 517 and 514. So the bears are taking over control of this market with this very swift move to the downside. And that is going to reiterate the point that I always tell you that bears take the elevator down. So when you start to get high volume selling, that is known as the elevator down. And if you're trying to catch a falling knife, it could be very difficult especially if you start to buy the dip too soon and then the dip just keeps on dipping and you get trapped in a bad trade because you didn't know how to manage your risk during a falling knife. Now, is this a falling knife right now? No, I do not believe this is a falling knife, but it definitely has the potential to turn into one. And today we did break down below the support trend line, which defined the bull trends. So this is definitely a market that is trying to roll over. And when a bull trend starts to roll over, there is the possibility that it starts to die. Now, one thing I want you to be aware of is this is called a bear engulfing candle and this is a very bearish candle which should not need to be said but i'll say it anyway and when you get a bearish engulfing candle you want to wait for confirmation that we break down below the low which is down here at 512.76 so for example if we gap up tomorrow morning there is a good chance this was a bear trap or an overreaction day and we could still see significant upside in this market before we continue any lower, which means we could bounce all the way back up to 518 or 520 and then still go down lower at a later date. So if you shorted the close, you are not necessarily going to make money instantly. It could be a bounce to a lower high before we continue lower towards that 50 EMA, which is going to be right around 507. So going into tomorrow, the first thing I'm going to look at is whether or not we gap down below today's low or we gap up and have some sort of inside day that allows us to push higher. It is almost a guarantee that if we do not break down below today's low, which is right there at 512.76, that we have a very good chance of having an inside day. Inside day just means that the candle's price action will be contained between today's low and today's high, which means we won't break above 524 and we won't break down below 512. So I do think tomorrow is a very good chance to be an inside day and that inside day could take us all the way up to 517 up to about 520. And then from there, I would be looking to short the market again because we are likely getting this rollover effect and we're losing the bull trend. And when you get a market that is weakening, you are going to do much better shorting it at resistances instead of trying to go long at support. 
So we will see. I need to assess the price action tomorrow morning, and that's what I'll do in the Discord server. And I'll tell you from the open what I expect to have happen. But right now, if I had to guess, we will likely get a little bit of a bear trap balance before we continue any lower. So do be aware of that. There is no guarantee just because you get a bearish engulfing candle that you have to continue to go lower. There are other examples like this, but a very simple one, even though this was not a bearish engulfing candle, it was a very bearish candle. And the next day, we just continued to gap up and go higher and continue the bull trend. So it's not always as simple as just reading the daily candle and thinking that is a guarantee that we have to go lower. And even if we do go lower, the lower Bollinger Band is only about 1% lower. And then below that, we have the 50 EMA and strong support at 507, which is about 1.2% lower. So do not think there's a ton more downside in the indices. I still think we're going to be range bound, which means you're going to want to buy near supports and sell near resistances. And if you did that today and you sold near the resistance at 523, you did very well today, even if you took profits before the end of the day right here, right around 520 or 517. So focus on the range idea. I think the market is in a range. And if we break out of the range, we're going to see it very clearly by breaking out of all of this sideways consolidation that we've been in. And really this goes all the way back to February where we started to see SPY breaking above 500 and we really haven't gone much of anywhere since then we've just been chopping around higher and now we're giving a lot of that back in one swift motion so focus on the range trading idea watch today's low because of the bearish engulfing candle and if we do not break today's low do not get bearish tomorrow that would be a very rookie mistake on the nasdaq 100 triple q's we were down 1.53 percent today and once more we have the bearish engulfing candle so the same rules will apply based on what i just said on spy you need confirmation that we're going to break down below today's low and today's low was 434.11. So if we start to gap up and we start to run tomorrow, there's a good chance we could go back up towards 442 and then still continue lower at a later date with a lower high, lower low into a rejection. And that could tell us we're finally starting to break out of this range. And the bottom of the range on the triple Qs is also the 50 EMA right around 434. So 434 is only about 0.4% away. So not a lot more downside in the triple Qs. So even though we did get a very bearish candle today, do not blindly just short this market because it could still get a very significant bounce towards resistance before we continue any lower. So just keep all of that in mind. The critical levels to pay attention to will be 434 to the downside as support. And then below that, we do have 428 and 425. But like I said, I don't think we're going straight there in a straight line. I think we're going to chop around in this range until we break out of the range, whether it be higher or lower, and then we'll continue in that direction. So focus on this support at 434. And if we start to bounce, we need to watch that resistance between 441 and 442. And above 442, we push to the top of the range right around 446 to 448. On the Dow Jones, we were down 1.34% today and we came all the way back to the breakout retest where we broke out of this consolidation phase went to a new all-time high then we had a double top rejection from the resistance at 398 broke down below the neckline at 393 confirmed this as an island reversal because we left a gap open and then had a very bearish engulfing candle all the way back down to support at 386 to 385 so I just threw a lot at you and a lot of this is very relevant because even though we had a double top rejection we've already hit the price target down here around support at 385 so just like I said on spying the triple Qs, do not rule out the possibility that Dow Jones starts rallying off of support and comes all the way back up to fill this gap just below 395. If that gap stays open, that's what's called an island reversal. And that means we're shifting out of a bull trend into a bear trend. And in that case, we would expect a lower high rejection into a lower low as we continue a bear trend. So any of these are possibilities, but I'm telling you right now, while we are above the 385 support, it makes no sense to be bearish because that's only about 0.27% away before we're at strong support. So if we gap up and start to run, do not blindly short it because we could go all the way up towards that gap fill at 395. And if you're shorting that, that's going to be very painful. So stay disciplined and follow the price action and understand price action is king and i just gave you the two scenarios to pay attention to one of them is bearish and one of them is a lot more bullish on the russell 2000 iwm etf we were down one percent today and we did fill the gap right around 208 so we can delete that gap fill and we're right back down to a very important support zone between 201 and 203 if we are going to stay bull in the small caps we need to hold above this rising 50 ema right around 201 so that is a very good risk level which is a strong support zone between 201 and 203 i still think we can push higher towards 214 but we need to follow the price action and if we start to break this support we will need to get risk off and risk off means we are expecting lower prices which will likely take us back down towards 196. If we continue higher, we need to break above 207 in the previous high at 210, and then we should be well on our way towards 214 to 220. On the RK ETF, we were down 1.36% today, and we're right at this very critical support, which is the neckline at 47, because if we break down below 47, 
This is going to look like a giant double or triple top breaking down below the neckline telling us that we're going a lot lower down towards 44. So respect this support, meaning that if it holds, that's bullish and we could bounce all the way back up towards 50. But if we fail 47, we are very likely going down to 45 to 44 in a hurry. So below 47 will be extremely bearish. And if we can hold above it, you have a very low risk long trade. In the VIX, we were up 14.11% today and the VIX did spike and close out above 15. And this is exactly what has been happening all year long during this bull market is that the VIX spikes above 15 during pullbacks and then crushes all the way back down once we start to get more bullish and that means we could see that happen once more. So VIX above 15 is in VIX crush territory and tomorrow is Friday which is notoriously known for crushing the VIX. So don't be surprised if we see the VIX crushing as we get a bounce to a lower high or a bullish bounce that sends us to new highs. The big test for the bulls tomorrow will be whether or not they can crush the VIX and if they can't and we start to get more high volume panicking then we're going to see the VIX spiking to 18 and 20 and we're going to go much lower within this pullback and likely see a deeper correction. On Bitcoin we're currently trading right around 68,000 and what it looks like to me is that Bitcoin is building out a giant wedge of consolidation and it's very likely this wedge has a little bit longer to go before we either resume the trend or break down towards that level at 52,000. Either of these is possible, so watch the price action breakout of the wedge. And if we break to the upside, then we're looking for 75,000. And if we break to the downside, we'll be looking for 52,000. We do have the benefit of a bull trend, so there is a good chance we break to the upside, but it's not a guarantee. So watch that wedge. And then when we break through that wedge to the high side or the low side, that's going to tell you the next leg in Bitcoin. On NVIDIA stock, we were down 3.44% today, and NVIDIA also has this very double top look, which means if we break down below this very critical support, which is the neckline at 857, we could be seeing much lower prices in NVIDIA. The most obvious price point would be the gap fill at 823, and it is possible we go down and fill that gap and then still continue higher. But because of the double top, if we do start to break down below 857, you won't want to assume the bullish scenario because it could be a double top rejection that could send us for the full measured move lower down towards 780 to 740. So keep all of this in mind because these are bearish looking charts that doesn't guarantee they need to break down, but we will know based on the price action breaking down below support at 857. So for that reason, 857 is critical support. And then below that, we have a gap fill at 823 and the rising 50 EMA right around 800. On Tesla stock, we're up 1.62% today. And the last time I gave you an update, we still had this gap open at 165, but we can now see that gap has filled and we are still finding resistance below 173 and below 173, we need to be risk off. What that means is below 173, because we have the bear trend, this could be another lower high rejection before we go to the bottom of the range down here between 154 and 160. 154 to 160 is the next place that I would look to buy the dip. Or if we can get a consistent bull breakout above 173, then I would buy the momentum into the gap fill above 187, or at least the price target right around 182. So below 173, we need to favor the bearish scenario, which does mean Tesla could go lower and above 173, we could start to get more bullish, but we need proof from the price action because we're in a bear trend and we need to respect the trend. On Apple stock, we were down 0.49% today and Apple is still getting rejected from these lower highs and the most recent lower high rejection was today right around 172, which is that 20 daily moving average. And I gave you a longer term projection that I thought Apple would hold above 167 and start to rally towards 187. And while I'm not changing anything about that projection, you have to remember that is 100% speculation. And we still do have a downtrend getting rejected from lower highs and trying to make lower lows, which will be the confirmation of this breakdown below 169 and the brand new low down here at 167. Below 167, we go to 163 and below 163, we can still go to 158. So I do want you to be aware of that. Don't blindly follow this idea unless you're aware of the risk and manage your risk at these support levels or wait to get more bullish until we can break back above 172. So jumping back over to the S&P 500 today, without a doubt, was a very easy read of price action. We saw it coming from a mile away in the Discord server, and that is why we did so well on such a bearish day. You could either short at resistance or simply just sit in cash and let it come crashing down to much better buying prices. This is what we're doing each and every day in the Stocks Channel Discord server, and as I showed you in the introduction, we are absolutely crushing this market. So if you want to come crush the market with us and get access to all of my intraday updates and technical analysis, as well as trade ideas, come join us over at the Stock Channel Discord server, which you can find out how to join by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.